I sort of figured that most people would be a bit rusty on this because um, <clears throat> it leads to a very important question with what we, we're doing here over the next 15 or so months. And Otter's Emit is basically uh, objective. So y we are all different. We all have different mentalities, the way we operate in term and also in terms of, you know, what hours can we allocate to trading and or learning or researching? So what is your objective? You know, what do you want? How you want it? And yeah, what type of system? So, you know, are you like me and you're sat in front of a screen all day or are you a busy person with a family? All that sort of stuff. So once you know what you want and how you're going to do it, you need to obviously come up with a system and that system needs some sort of trigger. Now that's not your like, <clears throat> and, and this is where a lot of people confuse things. So they're looking for a an indicator, a special indicator, a MACD crossover or some sort of stochastics, bollocks, whatever. And they think that's it, but it's not. You, you need uh, something where it gives you a heads up of, hey, here's a potential setup that could form. And if it does form, you then need to do X, Y, Z. So you need to look out for that trigger. Um, and then if what you think is going to happen does play out, you then know what your entry is. So I think hopefully, in fact, a, a prime example the other day was I was looking at, in fact, I'm going to have to exit this bloody PowerPoint and show you a good example. I just thought of one. So I was looking at Tau Kaz the other day, wasn't I? And my and I was seeing uh, if we just do the replay thing and just do this replay. Uh, okay, I can't do it for this. But anyway, so I was looking at this and I drew this falling compression uh, and I or well, these two trend lines. It was very early at the time and I thought, "Ooh, if we're, you know, this could be a falling compression here and therefore we could see a move down into this apex followed by a move to the, the base structure, which is this bit here. And so what I said is, um, well, actually around this point, I sold pretty much all the Casper I have, plopped it into Tau. Uh, oh no, it was a bit lower. I did sell, I think I was just constantly selling um, around this area here and putting it into Tau, um, waiting for the big run up to this area here. now. And so this was my trigger. This is me looking into this going, ah, oh, okay, this is what I'm aiming to do. And that, you know, that we, and the entry was hopefully this circle here. Now, what happened was we broke out a bit sooner, saw this nice halo, which again is another system, but, and that's where I, I said I, I'm bailing out on that, um, that trade at break even. And, and yeah, the market went up, hit my circle a lot sooner than I thought. I didn't see this mass dump coming. Now I think that dump um, was a result of that new KEF, the Casper Ecosystem Foundation, um, which is that this thing that I posted out the other day. It looks like they're trying to, you know, everyone's calling out for smart contracts and whatnot. So I think they're finally going, okay, fine, we'll do it. Um, so this is their sort of slight mild fluffing up uh, until we, yeah, we get there. So I guess that's a, a little example of, I guess the trigger, ah, you've seen the answers, whoops. <laughs> um, let's swap the display. Yeah, so type of system, trigger, entry. Then obviously you need to know your risk to reward. Now this obviously, this Otter's ear mitt is mainly based around, you know, if you're doing proper, you know, trading, like swing trading, etc. What we're doing with crypto at the moment is portfolio management, which is similar, but also has its nuances and differences. Um, but still, even with portfolio management, you need to know your, your risk, your reward, um, and more importantly, your stop. You know, when are you getting out? When is your thesis on a particular project invalidated? When are you going to go, actually, you know, I'm out of this. Uh, typically, a good rule of thumb is that if the expected price action of an asset doesn't play out how you expect it to be, that's effectively voided your, your expectations. And therefore, if your expectations have been voided, so too are your potential rewards. They, they should 
uh, by default also be voided or slightly voided, depending on how it, it plays out. Um, <clears throat> so you need to know when to bang out. And this is why you will, for anyone that's been around RT for the last 10 years, or hell, even the last five years, you will have seen that I have zero hesitations in dumping a coin or a project. Zero. No qualms. I don't give a shit about egg on my face or whatever. If I'm balls, if I'm heavy into a project and and I realise, okay, shit's about to hit the fan or shit is hitting the fan, I will exit. Um, and I, a lot of people see that in the trading world as, you know, weak hands or, or whatever. But that's rubbish. That is the thing that stops you from getting your face slapped continually and having dramatic um, sort of ba uh, equity drawdowns. Now, I have had a lot of big equity drawdowns in my in my career, but th that I think that's part and parcel with the way that I operate on the markets. Um, so you need to be willing to, you know, trade in and out of an asset. So, for example, I'm extremely bullish on Casper. But, you know, a week ago, or a few, I just, I can't, everything's blowing into one freaking day at the moment, but it feels like a week ago I sold all my Casper. I literally don't own any Casper right now. <laughs> and, and that may seem a bit weird for people that have heard me waxing lyrical about Casper for the last, well, over a year now. But it doesn't mean I don't love it anymore. I still love it. It's just having a little break from it and it's because because the charts lead me and at the moment I see more short-term upside in you know other bits and bobs and so far I've been proven correct so by reducing the Casper allocation in my portfolio over the last couple of months and flopping it all over into Tau um, that's been incredibly profitable in terms of increasing your the amount of tokens that you have you know even though Casper has zoomed up today even if I was to flop over the original amount of Casper that I sold back into Casper, we'd end up with more Casper. So you should not, again, don't ever get emotionally connected to your bag. And I'd be happy to drop BitTensor on, on, a, on a dime if there was a, a massive, you know, security risk, some sort of, you know, vulnerable exploit that hasn't been exercised yet or, or whatever. So yeah, you, you must always be pragmatic. And that's the thing with the markets. Um, so the stop also talks about the exit as well. So you need to know when it, when are you going to exit? When? So in a trade, for example, let's say you're doing a swing trade, you may have a a, a, a medium term move, let's say to the upside. But during that big swing, there will be lots of ups and downs. So yes, you can have your stop loss for you know the the the, the micro trading, but when is the end of the actual swing? Let's say. Um, in our case, for, for what I'm doing right now, and hopefully what you're all doing, um, the exit for us is when is the peak bull market? Now, obviously, we don't have a crystal ball. You've seen all of my p reasonings of when that cycle high will be. And I, and I still think it's going to be Q3, Q4, 2025. Um, one of the, the variables or questions which I don't know the answer to is, how many people are aware that Bitcoin always hits a cycle high plus or minus 30 days from the 1st of December? I mean, I, I found that myself. I, I've never seen people talking about that online, on Twitter or YouTube. That was me just looking at the charts going, huh, that's interesting. So obviously you all know that. Oh, and also the cycle lows are always a year later plus or minus 45 days from the 1st of December. So we know that as a small community, I've put it on, you know, YouTube and whatnot, but that means yeah, I doubt very many people heeded or even remember that. But so sometimes you, your ear may be close to the ground and you think everyone is aware of this. This is an absolute basic understanding. But when you, you know, really most people don't understand much or remember much. Um, so, I mean, hell, I've waxed, you know, I've, I've incessantly talked about Otter's Earmit to the RT community and it's in the course, etc. But if, I, if we were to do a spot quiz right now, probably 1% of you would know the answer. So going back to the 20, uh, 5th, uh, 1st of December 2025, is that going to be the cycle high or is everyone going to front run that? 
it's hard. So I think my best gauge at the moment is Q3, Q4, 2025. And <clears throat> perhaps start phasing out and scaling out Q3, <clears throat> 2025. You can never go broke taking profit. So. Oh, this is yummy. So I've been experimenting with fruit and sparkling water recently and I found a lovely combination. I cut up some ginger um, and I get cut up some lemon, so not with the rind, and fill it with blueberries and pomegranate seeds and it is yummy. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sort of trying to cheat myself into being slightly healthier um, and trying to cheat some fruit into me without realising it. Having said that, I've got chocolate galore and this is going to be my 25th easter egg this year i can't wait um anyway so moving on i don't know why i'm sharing my my dietary habits with you um next exit 25 yeah this will be number 25 i've i've, Holy shit. I've basically been going through every type of brand of chocolate egg there is i don't like the nestle eggs they are cheap shitty chocolate the galaxy eggs are amazing I've never had a Gillian one before, so I'm hoping that's good. Um, yeah, anyway, moving on. Um, the, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I'm just thinking about chocolate now. And these Viennese, Fox Viennese whirls are just like sex on biscuits. They're amazing. Um, right, exit, let's talk about analysis. So, um, I've completely lost my train of thought. Otter's ear mitt, right, yeah, so, Leading up to this, this is how you get in, eventually you get out, and then once you've got out, you need to analyse stuff, you need to take notes, you need to, you know, keep a Google spreadsheet or a log or, or something, and you need to analyse what you did well, what you didn't do well. Um, and this is my third proper crypto bull cycle. Um, so I've analysed the shit out of what I've done over the last two bull cycles. Um, I've made mistakes. I've done good things in both cycles, which I'm, which I'm repeating, and I've done idiot errors on both both cycles. So that's what I'm trying to mitigate this time. One of the errors that I'm mitigating and I'm trying to mitigate is trying to put the monkey back in its cage and not trying to top pick the ultimate secular bull high, if that makes sense. So let's say the high is the first of December. It's not to just wait until that very day and then try and mass dump out, out of the market. That's not wise. Um, and also, the, the other thing which sort of helps, in my, I guess in my position to a degree, if you're just starting out in crypto and in, in investing, this won't help you. But I guess what I'm about to say helps the sort of the, the 15 to 20% of RT members here that have considerable amounts of crypto right now. And the reason being is that although I, th and so here's my point, why we can be less greedy on the exit this time round and start scaling out slightly sooner than ide ide ideal. And that's because if you've got a big chunky amount of crypto right now, and I'm correct, let's say I am correct and Tau does rocket up to $22,000 Tau, we've got a basically, what was that, a 30, 35X from here. Um, if <clears throat> if you completely discount that considerably and put loads of buffer in that and go right, I, actually, once your pot ten x's, maybe you should start taking some money off the table. Now, for example, let's say, I'm, I'm thinking of one person in particular. I won't say the person's name, but this person has roughly three three million pounds sterling in crypto right now okay so imagine this person here does this person really need to wait for a twitter for a 30 or 35x from here we are now no a, a 10x from where we are now is like almost a guarantee oh no nothing's guaranteed but i think that's an incredible incredibly high probability outcome uh, scenario of, of, of at least getting a 10x within a relatively short period of time so Three, a 10x on 3 million is 30 million pounds. That per, I mean, thir, you, can do, you can do whatever you want with 30 million pounds pretty much for the rest of your life. So yes, it's, it's so for that particular person, and I've said to this person, look, 
at 30 million, what can you buy with, you know, 120 million or compared to 30 million? Obviously there's, you know, jets and yachts and all that sort of stuff, but it doesn't hurt to start, you know, scrolling funds out of the market, you know, in a safe, orderly time as we're seeing green candles. So if you're seeing massive green God candles, you, you know, summertime next year, you know, perhaps you need to use that that huge buying pressure to sell chunks of your pot without getting negatively slipped. Does that make sense? Yes. It, it does, and I think people who aren't used to having that lot amounts of money got to think also about their tax year. If they've got a business <laughs> yeah. from wherever they started it, and if it's not as April, obviously, but if you owe twenty percent or whatever, if you don't keep that to one side and everything goes wrong, you will go bankrupt. Not just in crypto, but your personal assets because you've got to pay the damn stuff. That is so true. In fact, that is an incredibly important thing because I've been in that situation where you've technically made a shitload of money on paper. Um, you then be you know being because you've been squeaky clean. You go, hey, I've made all this profit you owe you know 200 grand in tax or whatever and then all of a sudden the market runs away without you and you have no money left i've literally been in that situation myself and the only thing that bailed me out of my businesses so <laughs> yeah so chris that is probably the best comment you've ever made <laughs> so um it is and you and chris normally comes up with good comments on trading pub so th thank you it's something that we must not forget um and the annoying thing about tax and or CGT especially is that you're constantly chasing the previous tax, if that makes sense. So let's say you're gonna, you know, uh, I don't know, declare hundred grand in profit. Let's say, let's for example, let's just say there's twenty percent CGT. You know, I don't know where it is in, where in different countries, but let's say it's twenty percent. So you, let's say you, you you declare that and you need to cough up twenty grand in tax. So you're probably going to liquidate some of that crypto to cover that whether it's 20 grand or more but then next year because of you liquidating that into cash you're yeah you're basically crystallizing some of that profits and so yeah you're constantly chasing the cash uh, the, the, the tax year on year out but yeah it's um yeah don't don't get wrecked because of the tax um right so that's analysis um what else was I mentioning? Yeah, right. Risk of ruin. Obviously, this is more for trading because you, um, the risk of ruin calculations are, you know, using that calculator I have in, in the RT portal with where you can try and find out what your percentage or your, what your probability is of reducing your account 10%. So this doesn't apply so much for portfolio management. It does, but on a slightly larger scale, um, like, you know, if you're only prepared to have 20% drawdowns on your portfolio, what sort of exposure should you be having? All that sort of stuff. So if you're really risk averse and you don't like having mass equity swings, then yeah, maybe, in fact, well, crypto is not for you. <laughs> I mean, hell, even if you just had a portfolio 100% Bitcoin, you're going to have wild equity swings. So I think that's just, part, you just got to accept that. Right, um, next one is Monte Carlo. Again, this comes more into, with the more sort of day-to-day -day trading. So once you have your risk of ruin calculations, you can then pop that into the Monte Carlo spreadsheet. Again, all of this is in the course. I don't want to labor, labor this. And then you've got to implement everything. And then once you've implemented it, you've got to, again, go back to the EMIT again. Analysis, risk of ruin, Monte Carlo, implement and tweak, constantly tweak and keep trading in, yeah incessantly but for us with you know i guess we're into portfolio management or, or, or me at least for the next year um it's a case of you know constantly tw well actually th there's two cases here so part of there's there's a very good sort of train of thought where you can actually go right i'm going to set up a portfolio a good portfolio and just sit on it and leave it you know I'm going to ignore Siam he can dick around flip-flopping seesawing all he wants I'm just going to have my pot of I don't know 70% bit tensor 20% Casper and I don't know 10% Tau Inu I don't know 
and then just sit on it. And you're going to do well. You, I mean, if you have a portfolio similar to that, you're easily going to 10, 10 to 30x. Um, but then if, but if you're going to be more active like myself, I think I can outpace that static portfolio. And so far, my movements have, so that's good. I'm, I'm constantly tracking my performance against a static portfolio, if that makes sense. Um, if my active management is underperforming a static portfolio, then I'm doing something wrong. Um, and then I may have to just sit on my hands and do nothing for a while. But um, so I guess, yeah. So for, for us, we, we really, we're just tweaking our portfolio and I guess constantly staying ahead of the curve, knowing that we're gonna have some sort of mass exodus at some point, but also the, the global macro fundamentals also needs to be top of, or ever present in our mind. So everything looks amazing for, for crypto, um, but I'm not you know, gonna be completely naive and say, you know, all is good, it's a straight run to 10, 20x or 30x, which is why I made this post yesterday, which is this one. <clears throat> and I know you probably all read this, but I'm gonna go through it because maybe I can add some meat to these bones. Um, but basically, when you're fretting over a tiny 30% pullback, which is perfectly normal and expected many times during a bull market, have a quiet word with yourself and remember. Um, so long story short, this is what I mentioned last week that these are sort of the five main tidbits which make me really, really bullish on where we are now because we've got um, you know more ETFs on, on the way. We've got a dramatic rate cut cutting, which will then also happen at the same time as um, financial stimulus. They'll cut rates, then they'll do the stim pumping. Um, institutions haven't touched crypto yet, um, which again, we went through in depth last week. Um, retail is less of an, an issue, but they will still ape in. Um, and yeah, we haven't had countries ape in yet. We've had what, Russia and El Salvador, pretty much the only countries to properly ape into, into crypto. And Russia isn't official, that's an unofficial stat. Um, what we do know, Russia became one of the biggest crypto miners on the planet during the the heavy UN sanctions, which makes sense, obviously. Um, and so, if they if they're one of the world's biggest Bitcoin miners, surely they're also sat on a lot of Bitcoin. So that's unofficial, but most likely be official at some point. Um, so for me, these are my sort of triggers. So going back to Otter's Earmet, like. Not only do you need a trigger for your entry, you also need a trigger for your exit. So really, I could probably change this to Otter's tier mitt <laughs> or, or, or whatever, um, but it doesn't really have that good of, I prefer imagining an otter wearing some mitts over their ears instead of a tear mitt. But um, <clears throat> I, I personally am obsessed yeah, in fact, of, of all the things on Otter's Emit right now, I'm happy. We're in, we, you know, we, we, we've been in crypto 100% allocated for freaking ages now, since last year, um, early last year, in fact. So, yeah, we've, we've done all of this stuff. For me, the only thing that I actually give a shit about right now is this. This is where we are all potentially going to fumble the bag and maybe wreck ourselves. What I don't want to do is have a, a, a big portfolio, run it up 10, 20, 30x, and then be left standing butt naked on the beach with the, with the tide out going out. I don't want that to happen, which is why I, I'm, I'm having more of a hybrid thought of, yeah, I, I still want to hold out for the, 10, the 20, 10x, but you know, maybe when my pot gets a 10x which by the way is going to be a life-changing amount of money you know on any metric like maybe take a tiny bit out at 10x 